Welcome back to making a padlock. This is part two. In the last episode, you saw me make this little locking component. Well, this morning, I've made the other three, but they're not complete. As you can see, the originals have a little spring on them. We've got to somehow make that. From what is the question? What I think would potentially work well is uh, pallet, steel pallet strapping. But just because it looks like the right type of stuff doesn't necessarily mean it will be the right type of stuff. This is probably not going to be high carbon steel. It's probably not going to be appropriate for a spring. Ow! So we're now going to very scientifically test the flexibility of this spring. I don't call it the flexibility, it's called the springiness. Ah, sorry. Springtivity? Oh no, that's the play they do in uh, Easter. That is the best joke I've ever made. Ooh, that's an awful spring. Mm hmm. Oh, it's the right thickness. This is going to be dangerous. Dang it. Worse than the pallet strapping. We didn't harden the pallet strapping when we used it. We're going to try that. Still too bendy. Ah. So how do you buy a high carbon steel half millimeter thick sheet? That's a good question. All right. Half millimeter steel strip coil, 0.75% carbon it looks like. So I just ordered some spring steel strip. Now out of this brass, we are going to make the actual locking plate. Please don't snap. Please don't snap. Good. Thank you. All right, I've got to interrupt us to thank GlassesUSA.com for sponsoring this episode and for giving me vision. For the last four years, I've been wearing their glasses and their whole business model is about slashing prices on glasses for the end user, which is brilliant because they stock over 9,000 prescription glasses and sunglasses and you can even get designer brands for up to 70% off the usual retail pricing. Now, I absolutely love that you can use their glasses try on feature. You take a little picture with your webcam, you adjust your pupils, boom, you can now see your in all of the glasses on their website to see what fits you. My absolute favorite pair over the last several years has been the Westerns in Tortoise. I love these glasses. This is a new pair by Revel that they just sent me. And here's a pair of nice lightly shaded sunglasses by Revel. They also sell blue light glasses, contact lenses, and you can use their prescription scanner on your phone to find out the prescription of your existing lens. And you guys watching are gonna be getting a very special deal when you sign up to buy your own pair of glasses at my link in the description. Thank you glassesusa.com for sponsoring this. Let's get back to the work. At hand. So for our next component, we get to do one of my favorite things, which is make the tool to make the piece. We need to make ourselves a little die and a punch. So we're going to throw a little blue die. Come on, this bad mm, mama jammy. Would that be the plural of bad mama jammy? So this is the piece that we've got to make. We need a male punch and a female die. I just want to test an idea, just a little idea. We've got a bit of rubber matting here, a little bit of thin copper, and a sledgehammer. All right, it's not perfect, but promising. It's actually looking pretty good. I like how it looks on the thin copper. Let's move to some thin brass. So it's looking really good, apart from this one little kind of bubble where I think it sank too far down into the rubber, got a little bit too thin. So I'm trying to push it back out so it can hopefully get flush again. Um, or we'll have to just make a whole new piece. 
I'm gonna try again so I can get rid of this thing. Hopefully the next one's better. I just spent a good deal of time cutting out our piece and I have just found that this is the piece that I scrapped and I cut the one that I scrapped out. <laughs> this is the one with the divot that I said I didn't like. This is the one. Ah. So our front brass plate fits in. We just gotta do a little bit of polishing, round up some of the corners and make it look a little bit neater. And put a hole in it. And put a hole in it, thank you. The front brass plate and our little hole protector is all finished and working, so I'm happy about that. And now for the second time in one video, it is springtime. I ordered some spring steel stock. It's arrived in this little roll. I think it's meant to be 0.7% carbon. We are going to see if it's gonna work better than the springs that we attempted to make earlier. So firstly, is it even possible to cut with these shears? Not cutting well so far. Okay, I can cut it sideways. I think I'm gonna need the angle grinder to cut it down the length. Okay, it's pretty close, but I think it's still a little too soft, so I'm gonna harden it. Ah, that's even softer than it was. That's depressing. <laughs> right, I'm gonna try quenching in water, see if that's different. Crap! Well, at least it water hardens. I am gonna temper it, see if this is better. Here we go. Oh! Now that is a spring. That is exactly what we want. Okay, we've got the strategy. So now we've got to install the springs into the pieces. Looking at the originals, there's a little cut that is then kind of just hammered over to lock it tight. So this is gonna go there, and then one by one, we can install our little spring components. Oh my goodness. Oh, needs a little bit of adjustment. So I was thinking I had an issue with this post being too close. It's actually not that. In fact, because I've been working to scribed lines and I've been a touch on the conservative side with it, we have a little bit too much material on the front side. So we've got to fettle the ends to get them to the final dimension. So next up, we need to establish the order of these four pieces because that determines if the key is gonna work or not. The bottom protrusion on the key is the protrusion that moves this plate by catching under here. And then from there, there's one, two, three, four different heights. And using these different heights, we can work out what order these need to go because the more it pushes out, the higher that particular plate needs to be lifted. Just like this one, it needs to go a long way to actually allow the locking plate to slide. Slightly high, medium, very high, medium. I fortunately numbered them. We have slightly high, medium, very high, medium. With that, we can roughly make our key. Right, let's get it soldered. How is this not gonna fall over? <laughs> Oh, it's so satisfying. Every time, I love it. While I was polishing it for the next step, it broke. My soldering was not very good.
So now, with every single plate, we're going to need to adjust both the key and the plate to make them match together perfectly. And so this is going to be functionally very unique. So right now, I can get the plate to lift up, but it doesn't lift up enough to clear through this slot and bring the rear plate through. So, insert time lapse of me fiddling for hours and hours. At last, it took an entire morning of filing, but it works. Unlocked, locked, unlocked, locked. So now, in order for this to go on, we need our ring around the outside, but as opposed to making it out of bland old steel, we're gonna cut it out of brass, because I think that's gonna look quite pretty. First dry assembly. <laughs> I made a padlock. Well, I haven't finished it yet. So here's what we've got to do. We need to prep the surface finish. <sighs> Bless you, Jamie. <laughs> we've got to prep the surface finish on this front plate, prep the surface finish on this side band, rivet our brass pieces onto the front, and then rivet the whole thing together. It actually, I mean, I, I'm just shocked. It's gonna work. It is all riveted together. It looks just like the real thing, apart from our little forged shackle and some of these holes that ended up being a little bit oversized, unfortunately. I am incredibly happy with how the key looks. I think it is just awesome. It closes, it locks, it opens. But this has been a super mentally stimulating project. Thank you for watching. Thank you to glassesusa.com for sponsoring this video. Check them out down below, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.